So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the OECD Data Explorer to locate and extract data on different social and economic indicators. And the way we're going to go about this is to uh, do a specific example and then walk through the different steps involved in using the Data Explorer. The example we're going to use is from a recent uh, OECD report called Pensions at a Glance. And uh, when I came across this, I thought it was quite interesting that uh, what they write here, that the employment rate of uh, 55 to 64 year olds in the OECD has reached a record of 64% in the second quarter of 2023. And that's quite a significant increase from a decade ago. So the, about the second quarter of 2013. So we're going to do two things with the Data Explorer. First, we're going to locate the historical time series for the OECD average. And then the second thing is to locate the most recent quarters and then compare countries. So which country has the highest and which has the lowest employment rate of this age group. So let's get started. So to follow along, go to the home page of the OECD Data Explorer. The URL is up here. You can also find it if you go to the OECD homepage, then press the data tab and you will find a link to uh, Data Explorer in this section. So if you press that, you will also then get to the welcome screen. So what greets you here is uh, quite a long list of different themes and uh, different data sets. And the one that we are using in our example here is gonna be jobs and then employment. So uh, pressing that brings up different data tables and we can then go ahead and find employment rate. So you can also push down here to read a bit more about the different data sets. But the next step then is to press employment rate. That will load up the structure and the data and give us this interface here. So although some of the filters will be different from data set to data set, this interface will be uh, quite similar regardless of what you're looking at in the Data Explorer. One quick tip is to just go ahead and press the table button. I find this useful because it gives me a quick visual glance of the data. And uh, in this particular case, uh, by default, we will have all the OECD countries. We will then also have some of the most recent quarters. And uh, we have the age group 15 to 64 selected here by default, as well as quarterly data. So um, when we're talking about employment rate, this means that, uh, for example, in Australia, in the fourth quarter of uh, 2023, 77.5% of the population between 15 and 64 year old were in employment. So how do we go about with our first task, which is to find the historical data for the OECD average? So what we do is to head over here first to filters and then go ahead and select uh, in age. We select 55 to 64, deselect that age group and that's going to update the table. So make sure that we are in total here and also that we have calendar and seasonally adjusted data. And then for reference area, we can then go ahead and select the OECD only. So that's going to load up. And what we will then see is uh, still some of the most recent quarters only. And that's going to say 63.9, which is, of course, the same as the report said. So back to the table. And uh, we would like to then change the time period because we would like to have the full historical time series. So how do we do that? And uh, again, one small tip here is to just go ahead and it doesn't seem very logical at first, but uh, if you then just press the earliest year that pops up here and then go ahead and press the latest year, uh, that will basically give you the full data series. So um, although we don't have data for 1955, uh, it will make sure that we get the earliest data. So that's going to be 2007 first quarter, 53.2. Then all the way down to the second quarter of 2023, which is 63.9. So we're actually pretty close in completing our first task, which was to get the historical time series for the OECD average. What remains is to go ahead and press the download button and we can do that as a table in Excel or as a CSV file. So let's do table in Excel. I'll just show you quickly how that looks like. 
So open that file and you can then, for example, go in and delete that column. And this will then be a pretty good starting point to make a chart, for example, in Excel or a different visualization tool. We're not going to do that in this video, but rather head back to the data explorer. You can also go ahead and share this URL so someone else will then get, see exactly the table you have selected here. And one last tip is to uh, also check out the chart button here because that will automatically generate a column chart, row chart. For this data series, a timeline chart can be quite uh, useful. And we can then see the data series here. You can then also go ahead and customize that. Uh, I would always recommend doing a zero value for the y-axis, don't cut that off. And then for example, we could do maximum 80. So with that, you can also then go back to the download button and now you see chart as picture as an option. So you can then import this into a report or PowerPoint presentation. So let's get back to our table and now do the second thing, which was to look at the most recent data for all OECD countries and check out which countries have the highest and the lowest employment rates for all the workers. So to get that data, we would first have to go back to our reference area. And uh, in here, we can then uh, click all the different countries there, or we can go ahead and open up this menu. And if you change selection mode to um, all items at the same level, that would then mean if you press Australia, it will go ahead and select all the OECD countries. We can then apply that and that will load in all the data. So recall also that we had the time period set here to the earliest year, which is 1955. So this is going to be uh, a lot of data loading in too much and you will then get the warning uh, here. So um, let's narrow it down because we're only interested in the most recent data. And to do that, you can go ahead and use the last option here. So for example, Let's take a look at what happens if I push uh, last five. So that's going to give us the last five periods if we have this selected. So how this is calculated is that you would have to think about the quarter you are currently in when you're viewing it. So as of February 29th in 2024, we're in the first quarter of 2024. There's no data for that quarter, but that's when it starts counting. Uh, what you could also do is to uh, do time series values. So if we just leave five there and what's going to happen here is that it's going to bring up all the different OECD countries and it's actually going to give you for all the countries five most recent data points. So that will differ from country to country as you can see here. For Australia, for example, that will be from the fourth quarter of 2023 down to the fourth quarter of 2022. But uh, for Ireland, this will be for second quarter of 2022 until the second quarter of 2023, as that's the most recent value. But in any case, this view gives you a pretty good overview. And um, we're going to use this to then uh, go ahead and take a look at the latest quarter and get some comparable uh, data. If we take a closer look, we can see all OECD countries have reported for the second quarter, whereas for the third quarter, Norway, Slovenia as well as Iceland and Ireland are missing. Then uh, for the fourth quarter, just a few countries have reported. So if we were to make a chart here or table with a ranking, we could use the second quarter data where all have reported or I think we could also use the third quarter data. And then uh, for those four countries indicate with an asterisk that uh, they are second quarter data. So to do that, uh, let's go ahead and download this. Uh, as a table in Excel. I'll just show you quickly how you can get this as a ranked list, as a starting point for uh, more visualizations. Then you go ahead and do that, remove the columns we don't need. Let's also take away the fourth quarter and then we move over Iceland and Ireland there, as well as Norway and Slovenia. And when we have done that, we can delete that column and then go ahead and uh, put our asterisk. So also Slovenia and Norway. And then as we're 
primarily concerned with uh, the countries here, we can delete those averages for the OECD as well as um, the G7 and Euro area as well as the EU27. So you also notice you have a row up here that we can also remove. So this will then be the reference area. And if we then select this table, go as format as table, and then say we have headers and press OK, we can push this drop down and do a descending sort. So this will then rank all the countries from highest to lowest. So with that, we have completed the two tasks that we set about to do in this example. I hope you found this video helpful as a guide through some of the features that are part of the OECD Data Explorer. There are of course many more and we'll take a look at some of those in an upcoming video. For example, on how we can use the API to access the data programmatically. But for now, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.